Hello and welcome to yet another interesting time in information technology class. My name is Gogo Ella Thompson and in this lesson we will be looking at the topic digital divide under the theme basic knowledge of information technology. In this lesson we're going to find out what is happening in society based on different changes that have occurred. And by the end of the lesson, it is expected that you should be able to do a few things. First, you should be able to explain the meaning of digital divide. Next, you should be able to differentiate between the old and new economy. You should also be able to explain the limitations of the old economy. And finally, you should be able to state the benefits of the new economy. Before we were born, up till this present time, lots of changes have happened in societies. Lots of developments have occurred. And one way man marks these different changes is by using eras or ages. An age is a distinct period in time with certain characteristics. A distinct period in history with certain characteristics. Some of these ages are the agrarian age. This was when societal survival was based mainly on agriculture and it required lots of intensive hard labor. At some other point, we had the industrial age. At this point, several industries were created and goods were produced in mass. And finally, we have the digital age, which is the present age we are experiencing. In this digital age, lots of processes, both agricultural, industrial, economic, several processes are being operated by the use of digital technologies. The digital age is characterized by the availability and use of several modern digital technologies, such as your computers, your smartphones, your tablets, digital cameras, the internet, and so many others. But then, different people have different level of access to these different technologies. So you see, there's a gap because some persons have more access while others don't have as much. So this gap between those who have access to these modern digital technologies and those who do not is called the digital divide. In a society, there are different ways of measuring digital divide, and they include teledensity, which refers to the number of functional telephones in a population. Another way of measuring digital divide is by the number of personal computers that are in use in a population. And finally, another way of measuring digital divide in a society is by the number of internet users in a population. As you can see, the measurement of digital divide is centered around the use of digital technologies. Now let's proceed by looking at two very important terms associated with digital divide. The first is old economy, while the second is new economy. What do these mean? Well, the term old economy is used to describe the economic system of the pre-information technology period, which did not rely on digital technologies. Remember I said there are different ages, some of which are the agrarian age, the industrial age, and the digital age. Now, the ages before the digital age, for example, the agrarian age or the industrial age, refers to the old economy. These ages did not rely on the use of digital tools, did not rely on the use of digital technologies. So any society that does not rely on the use of digital technology is operating on the old economy. On the other hand, we have the new economy. And the new economy, the term new economy 
is used to describe the information technology period where the economic system is greatly supported by digital technologies. So you can see that the distinguishing factor between the old economy and the new economy is the use of digital technologies. Let's proceed by looking at differences between the old economy and the new economy. So here are some differences. Now, the old economy was mechanical in nature and it was labor-based. This means a lot of human effort was required to operate such a system. Whereas, the new economy is digital in nature, it is technology-driven and is knowledge-based. Digital technology, with the push of a button, can carry out so many tasks. The old economy was constrained by time, space, and distance. For example, from this image, for business to go on in the old economy, both buyers and sellers need to be in the same place and at the same time. Whereas, the new economy was not constrained by time, space, and distance. In the new economy, buyers and sellers do not necessarily have to physically meet. Buyers can order goods using their laptops and smartphones, and they can pay for such goods using electronic means. They can also have these goods delivered to them right at home. So you see great differences between the old economy and the new economy. We will proceed by looking at the limitations of the old economy. The old economy has certain limitations. Let's look at some of them. In the old economy, there was high transaction cost of goods and services. In the old economy, there was limited storage facilities for goods. In the old economy, there was poor distribution network for goods and services. And the old economy was constrained by time, space, distance, and technology. So these are some of the limitations that can be experienced when operating in the old economy. Let's proceed by looking at some benefits of the new economy. These are some benefits of the new economy. In the new economy, little capital can be used to start a business. In the new economy, new job opportunities are available for people. Also, in the new economy, there is easy and faster communication due to the numerous digital devices available. And this further leads to better access to information. And finally, the new economy encourages better collaboration. And by collaboration, I mean people working together, irrespective of their location. Now, it is obvious that there are lots of benefits to enjoy in the new economy. However, since there is this digital divide, what can be done? Let's proceed to find out. Here's a simple answer. The digital divide needs to be bridged. That means we need to close the gap between those who have access to digital technologies and those who do not. To do this, different people need to come together to perform their roles. Different people have a role to play in the bridging of the digital divide. Here are some of the measures to be taken in bridging the digital divide. First, the government should develop policies that will increase internet access among the population. Next, the creation and use of digital content in local languages should be encouraged. This will make more people want to go online to look for information. This will make more people want to use digital technologies. Also, the private sector should invest in information technology businesses. For example, internet cafe. And finally, some corporate social responsibilities from companies 
should be channeled towards providing broader access to information and communication technology goods and services. So you see, everybody has to play a part in bridging the digital divide. And with this, we've come to the end of this lesson. But before we leave, let's have a quick summary. First, we learned that the world is constantly changing and such changes are marked by eras or ages. Some ages include agrarian, industrial, and digital age. Next, we learned that the term old economy is used to describe the economic system of the pre-information technology period that did not rely on digital technology. In addition, we learned that the old economy was mechanical, labor-based, constrained by time and space, and so on. Going on, on the other hand, we learned that the term new economy is used to describe the information technology period where the economic system is greatly supported by digital technologies. And we learned that unlike the old economy, the new economy is digital in nature, technology driven, and is not constrained by distance, space, and time. Furthermore, we learned that some digital technology available in the new economy, that is the digital age, include the internet, computers, television, smartphones, tablets, cameras, and so on. Next, we learned that different people around the world have unequal access to these digital technologies. The unequal access to these digital technologies is referred to as digital divide. And finally, we learned that certain measures can be taken to bridge the digital divide. At this point, let's try out some exercises. Question one, which of the following is not a feature of the old economy? And here are the options. A, mechanical. B, saves time. C, labor-based. D, constrained by distance. And the correct answer is B, the old economy does not save time. Let's try out one more. Question two, which of the following is a feature of the new economy? And here are the options. A, mechanical. B, labor-based. C, digital. D, distance constraint. And the correct answer is C, it is digital in nature. With what we've learned so far, I believe you now understand that you have a role to play in bridging the digital divide. Till we meet in our next lesson. Bye-bye.